So before we uh, start the run, uh, the final run up of presentations, I would uh, last time give it a try to uh, our presentation uh, from Hexagon. You can now start uh, your presentation. It's now officially past uh, yeah, five minutes after four. So I hope now everyone is back and uh, yeah, the floor is yours. I'm happy everything got solved. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, sorry about the earlier audio problems. Uh, my name is Nick Chorley, and uh, I'm uh, the director of our public safety business uh, across Europe. So, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hexagon and uh, what we do in public safety, and then show you the sort of products um, that we have. So, first of all, Hexagon at a glance. Um, we have a, all sorts of different verticals that we uh, we sell into different markets, but the one that we're really going to look at um, in this presentation because it relates to public safety is the urban ecosystem on the right hand side there um, where we're talking about uh, our solutions, our smart solutions, putting data to work to empower connected ecosystems in cities um, and specifically public safety agencies. We're broadening, broadening out because public safety is not just about the public safety agencies, it's all about all of the, the citizens and other Industries and uh, third res um, party responders that uh, that help those agencies in uh, keeping the public safe. So uh, we have a, a a safe city framework. That's that's what we that's what we call it, which is really um, centered on our command and control solutions, but also some other uh, newer products that I'm going to sh show you about towards the end of this presentation. Um, but the, the core of this is our command and control system, our incident-based management system. Uh, and we are providing connectivity with different agencies across the city or region, collaboration and intelligence, and sustainable solutions through uh, an evergreen-style um, technology improvement. We are a global leader in public safety solutions, um, protecting 1, 1 in 8 million people around the world, 30 different countries, many different languages, um, 2,500 different agencies. Many of those agencies are multi-agency, so there's uh, you know, evidence of collaboration with, uh, in some cases, 100 different um, public safety agencies working together on one platform, one system. And we've been doing that for uh, the last 30 years. Um, and uh, and that's really a, 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 a story about this um, about the, our journey really. Um, even before we were involved in, in, in public safety, uh, we were um, a pioneer uh, with the Apollo Moon program. You might remember the name Intergraph, which is uh, one of our, our, our previous brand um, before we were bought by Hexagon about ten years ago. We were the first to bring the digital map um, onto, a, onto, a, onto a computer screen in the, in the 70s um, and the first to bring um, the map to a command and control system or a CAD system at the end of the 80s. Um, and now um, we're still continuing that sort of that in innovation and we're bringing the whole of the CAD and command and control experience to the cloud um, as we transform our solutions um, uh, to be available from the cloud, but also still on premise. So that's a modernizing proposition, breaking down our, our uh, previous um, uh, products, uh, keeping the core of them, but uh, making them available as microservices and in a, in a brand new browser-based presentation uh, with, a, with a redesigned user experience. And because of that redesign, we, uh, of course, have a number of deployment options now, which is really very exciting because that completely changes the business model in some cases about how we can deliver the software to public safety agencies. Um, so on the one hand, we have the uh, traditional on-premise delivery. So just like it was before, um, when you had your own data center uh, as a public safety agency, but now the presentation of the user interface is uh, is through 
completely through a browser as a web service um, supplied from that uh, on-premise data center. Uh, you can also have your own, if you, if you want to deploy in the cloud, you can have your own managed cloud or a cloud managed by a third party. That's the sort of middle option. And then the final option is we can manage the whole thing for you and host it for you um, as a managed service from Hexton, either on Azure or on Amazon Web Services. <clears throat> and, that, and then that brings also all sorts of different um, commercial models as well for paying, paying for that. So now let's look at the actual uh, software itself quickly. Um, and the, 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 the main uh, product there is, the, what, is what we call Hexagon On-Call, or Hexagon On-Call Dispatch. And you can see there the, uh, an example of the, the new user experience. This is all about the map. It's very map-centric. And um, we can consume any number of different maps uh, that, are, that are served up as web-based services uh, and different layers. So for instance, weather, weather system layers, um, public transport layers, all sorts of different information that is publicly available to you as, a, as an agency on top of the base layer of your own information. The call taking component is very important, of course, um, and has, has now become more of a multi-channel experience rather than just voice calls. So you can see on the left-hand side, um, supporting many different channels of, 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 uh, of public getting in contact with us to report their emergencies. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you can see many different additional services that we can plug into location-based services. Uh, so in addition to the, the maps that I was showing you before, we can um, bring in um, services such as Rapid SOS and, of course, AML and an and e-call um, if your vehicle breaks down. Outside of the control room, um, we extend to, to it a mobile space as well, of course. Um, and because it's a browser-based solution, uh, of course, actually, you can, you can take it anywhere. You've got connectivity, um, secure connectivity to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the main system. Um, and uh, so in terms of in, our mobile unit is providing a, a, not, not just connectivity, but a, a, a specialized workflow um, and format for, for, a, for a smaller screen format uh, in, in the vehicle. Typically, this is a, a mounted system or a tablet in the vehicle, um, as opposed to mobile responder on the right-hand side, which is, a, which is a, uh, an app for, for Android or iPhone, um, and, and more orientated towards the, uh, the smaller, smaller form factor that you'd have on a, on a, on a, on a smartphone. So that's bringing bringing the whole capacity of the system uh, into the into the field, either into your pocket or into into your vehicle. Um, we also have uh, analytics. Um, so this is a Microsoft Power BI based add-in, um, data warehouse schema, and all of the uh, data models associated with that to make reporting easier um, are are available out of the box, along with some um, some standard reports, which you can then extend. Um, and this is not just tabular reports, of course. This is the sort of um, uh, data models that you see or analytical models that you see on the right-hand side there in that picture where you can drill into the different uh, elements and, and, uh, and almost ask the questions or, or, or be presented with the sort of questions that you might be uh, wanting to ask by virtue of the data that you're looking at. The, uh, you're also seeing a map there. So it's not just uh, data in terms of... Uh, spreadsheets and, and, and drafts and things like that, but you can also present those analytical, the results of your analytical data set on a map. And that can also not just be um, 2, 2D, but also uh, the, the, the fourth dimension of time. So you can play back um, the, the disposition of different incidents and your resources at any particular point in time, and, uh, and any AVL traces that show you where your vehicles were moving um, at the time when perhaps uh, the dispatcher was making a choice of who to send. And then finally, the, the two, uh, I'd like, I want to talk to you about two new products. Uh, one, one is, is brand new and just launched, and one is a sneak peek of, uh, 
that hasn't been launched yet will be launched at the end of this year, beginning of next year. So Smart Advisor is, uh, is our assistant that um, tags alongside all of what you've seen up till, until now. It's, a, it's an assistive AI-based uh, um, advisor for the dispatcher to make them aware of things that perhaps they can't see because they're beyond boundaries that they're not perhaps looking for the data of, or perhaps they're uh, events that they're not, that aren't that that, uh, that are that they're not they're not visible all or the importance of them isn't visible right now. The importance comes from the fact that things have happened in recent time, um, which perhaps you've forgotten about or weren't aware about because it was before your ship. So this is n nudging the dispatchers to take various actions, suggestions, um, pointing to pointing to connections in the data, pointing to connections um, in what uh, in what going on in, in, the, in the space, the overall space of the agency. And finally, uh, Hexagon Connect is, an, is a new product above the command and control, above the control room per se, the individual control room, acting as a bridge between many, many different agencies, not just public safety agencies, but also utilities, uh, municipalities, local governments, charities, all of the different uh, agents that may take part in the public safety response. Um, this can be used for the everyday and the, and the major incident um, to provide a, a common uh, portal of information for those agencies that are collaborating. But the, the strongest part of this is the, is the way in which it uh, allows you to manage the data that you share as an individual agency you 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 determine who who you're collaborating with and what data they see, not just at the at the sort of object level, but even at the record level. There's particular types of record that you don't want them to see, uh, or it's not appropriate for them to see. Um, and, and that that way, the best information can be shared to solve the problems that are existing in the community without um, without compromising the agencies. Uh, responsibility to keep data protected. So that's it. That's the end of my uh, presentation. Those are my contact details. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be delighted to answer them now. But otherwise, um, please get in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And again, thank you very much for bearing with us uh, to connect. And I'm very happy it worked uh, out. So after this small stress, I think that the presentation went really well. So thank you very much for being with us despite those issues. I see thank there's you. one question from uh, the audience, but because we are running uh, over uh, the time, I would suggest uh, the participant who asked this question to contact you directly afterwards. And we will continue uh, to, to move on with still five presentations to go. I see another question coming. Please don't uh, take it wrong. We need to continue, but I'm okay, sure that no Nick will be happy to reply to your questions. You have his contact details on the slides. We are now moving to a presentation of Esri, the first one of the official blog, which got a little bit disturbed. We are sorry for that. The technical issues happen. I don't make it um, no more longer. I see that Esri is ready. Anthony, are you with us? Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? And you should yes. be seeing a screen with a few pictures on the front. Okay. We so do see. first of all, <laughs> okay. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Cassia, Taviana, for uh, facilitating this event. Uh, so. It's not going to be too long before we can meet back up in person. I know I'm looking forward to getting out to, to Riga. So I'm Tony Giles. Uh, my role at Esri is a sluice engineer within our European national government team. And I'm based in Aylesbury in the UK. For those that sort of have been to ENA events in the past, you may uh, recognize a couple of my colleagues there. We've got Mike King who's the Director for Emergency Communication Solutions. He's actually based in the US. And Francisco Nobre, who is a Business Development Manager, who's also in the UK team uh, with myself. So who are Esri? Uh, we're an American company headquartered in Redlands, California. Um, we've been around for about 50 years. Uh, with a fifth largest privately held uh, software company in the world. And we're still actually owned by the founding or our founders, uh, Jack and Laura Dangerman. Uh, widely recognized as the global leader in geographic information systems. 
and our mission is to inspire and enable people to uh, make a difference in society. Uh, we currently support over 350,000 customers in various organizations globally, and we help them to solve their spatial problems. Uh, we achieve this through about 4,200 US employees and about 6,200 overseas employees through a global uh, distributorship. So if you're interacting with Esri within Europe, you're probably more than likely going to be doing it through one of our distributors, such as Esri France, Esri uh, Spain or Esri UK and so on. Uh, we currently reinvest about 31% of our 1.4 billion annual revenue back into research and development which as you can imagine is quite a huge amount uh, going back into basically advance our technology uh, in the future so like i said our main purpose is to build tools that help you do your work better uh, arcgis has been our main focus in this regard and the vision for arcgis is to build a comprehensive geospatial platform that supports multiple communities, ranging from our GIS users to uh, system developers, system de uh, designers. So in addition to supporting the GIS community with our extensive tools, we also provide a slimmed down version of GIS in the form of mapping and location services aimed at the developer and system integrator communities. In the last few years, we've been building geo-enabled systems, which take uh, components of our GIS technology and build standalone independent systems with complete workflows that focus on uh, organizations that are doing emergency management, public safety, indoor management, and so on. We also support the developer community by making it possible to extend our platform. Uh, our general strategy is to build software and software as a service. And we sometimes refer to the combination of all of this as the geospatial cloud. So where can we help you in emergency call taking and dispatch? Well, first of all, probably the most important is uh, accurate address locating or geocoding. Uh, in an emergency, you need to know where to respond. Uh, probably with next generation call taking, uh, the location is likely to be automated from the device. But I'm sure there's always going to be cases where you know, you're still going to be receiving a, a call and someone's going to be giving you an address such as a street name or a postcode or may even be play uh, a place name or uh, a local point of interest. So all of these can be handled within the system and allow you to actually dispatch someone to that location quickly. Uh, next thing is routing. So either fastest route point to point. So taking into consideration such as vehicle type, time of day, traffic, whether you're using blue and you can go the wrong way down a wrong way street and so on. Uh, or the other thing is drive time. So how far can I get in five, 10, 15 minutes? Uh, this can be used then to pre-position assets. So you know that you can respond in the fastest time possible. Next, we come on to tracking. This can either be uh, real time or historic tracking. So historic, this could be your uh, ABL data, and you want to look at that data to, to sort of define patterns and see patterns in your data, or you might be doing it in real time. So you want to know exactly where your assets are and where they're responding to straight away. We then go into 3D visualization, whether this is at a city level or an individual building or complex or venue. Uh, integration of building plans in 3D allows responders to have a look at building layouts and complexities within buildings. So is there under, parts of the underground, is there certain st stairwells that you have to get through? And they can do all this before they actually have to arrive on scene. And then finally, uh, ability to manage uh, large events and monitor operations through a number of configurable apps and templates that we've got. So you can bring your data and we can easily configure uh, dashboards and solutions to to work with your data as opposed to taking months and months of a design uh, activity. We don't do all this in isolation. Uh, we do have a rich ecosystem of partners that we engage with to either provide data services or consulting. Uh, some of our partners are, are large companies. So you'll see on there like Microsoft uh, here for, for data. Uh, we also support hundreds of startup communities. Uh, 
with software to get into the field that helps support your work. Typically, when we attend uh, the person or the in-person ENA conference, we share a booth with Pulsium, who demonstrate the integration between their CAD solution and our mapping platform. So ArcGIS uh, by its design is an open platform. Uh, first of all, it's flexible. We have a number of APIs and SDKs that work across the different elements of our platform. So including JavaScript and, and REST for web development, uh, all the way through to runtime support for both sort of Android and iOS devices. Uh, we're interoperable. So we use you know, the numerous standards that are out there, uh, such as OGC for web services, or the latest I3S standard for 3D visualization. Uh, we're also customizable in the sense that we can extend the platform with rich tools like Python or integrate open source tools like TensorFlow. Uh, it enables us to build fairly complex systems. Uh, the success of this strategy is pretty strong. Uh, it's evidenced by thousands of heterogeneous systems that have been implemented using and powered by our platform. Developers can also make easy, uh, can also more easily tap into location services for their own applications. And location services are built into many of our ArcGIS products, such as ArcGIS Online, uh, which is our online uh, offering, ArcGIS Pro, which is our desktop offering, uh, and then other sort of web and mobile apps. Location services such as mapping, geocoding, routing, data layers, and geo enrichment capabilities are available for all developers to support uh, location enablement at any scale. So that was a, a quick run through of who Esri are. Haven't particularly gone into our individual products within our product stack, but if there's any more information you'd like, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with either one of us on the slide there. Uh, I think I've got, got about a minute there for questions. Happy to field them now. Otherwise, say please, please email us. Indeed, Anthony, you are right. We still have one minute left for your presentation, which uh, gives you now, uh, of course, uh, the time for Q&A. I look now at any questions, but there are none arriving. We're still going to wait. Um, so I address now um, the audience. Please feel free now to ask Anthony uh, your question. We are happy to take one or two. Uh, in the meantime, I will tell you that the next presenter is um, Thor Nielsen from NYSE. After we will finish the Q&A session, if there will be questions, of course, we will move forward with uh, the presentation of NYSE. So again, I ask the questions from the audience, if any, feel free. We only see them, moderators. But I don't see any, Anthony. I okay, think that... no thank you very much. Okay, I'll pass on to NY well, then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Esri, for being with us. Now we are moving to uh, Thor Nielsen from um, NYS. Apologies, we're going to be over some uh, time, uh, but I hope uh, you will stay all with us. You will all stay with us. Hi, Thor. I see Hi, your presentation. You? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to hear you. Um, we see you well. Everything good. is almost done. You just have to put your presentation on the full screen and then we are I ready to do that right away. The floor Hi, is everyone. yours. Uh, just making sure that the sound is okay. Um, thank you very much for us being able to present today. Um, as the presenter said earlier, uh, looking forward to the next uh, uh, on site uh, meeting. And, uh, but it was a great opportunity for Ina that we could do this presentation. Um, so we're gonna be talking about RTT and uh, accessibility to emergency services. Uh, RTT is a standard that is supported by Ina, Nina and Etsy. And I myself, I'm Thor Nielsen. I'm a VP of uh, Global Sales at NWISE. I'll talk a little bit about NWISE at the end of the presentation. But I'd like to start a little bit about um, actually a difficult situation that deaf, deaf, blind and hard of hearing have when they want to call emergency services and how RTT can enable communication. And it's part of the NG uh, 112 standard. I'd like to present also a case study in the Netherlands. 
and uh, a little bit more about what we deliver and why and why. So uh, I'd say that the situation uh, like deaf, deaf blind and hard of hearing people, it's pretty cri very critical and the corona crisis, uh, global crisis has just uh, uh, shown the uh, dimension of the situation. Uh, the U.S. actually is the country where uh, it's most accessible with 200,000 calls a year on a population of 340 million. Sweden is uh, doing uh, um, pretty okay, pretty good, well, in the in European uh, uh, level, uh, 1,800 calls on a population of eight, 10 million people. But then uh, you can see that all European countries, we're talking about 20, 100, uh, large, larger countries, maybe 200, 300 calls a year. And it means that it's not accessible. Um, some people can make direct calls, not hear very well. SMS, which is an option, uh, but uh, uh, it's an option when something, a voice call or a call is not possible. Some people call via relay services or an interpretation services unfortunately available only 10, 12 countries in Europe. Some countries require deaf people to send a fax uh, to uh, 112. I would never dream of sending a fax to 112 to say that my house is burning or something like that, because I'm not really sure it would happen. Um, so RTT is a solution. So RTT is not only text, it's a phone call. Uh, the difference between RTT and chat is that we're sending character by character and being a phone call so that the line is connected so the call taker can see that the other party is on the line. If the line, if the call is interrupted uh, and if it's not technical like internet connection, uh, it's uh, uh, as in many cases that have been, um, then something more grave could have happened so uh, the caretaker can take proper action. And it's accessible for deaf, deaf blind and hard of hearing people. It's a standard and once again, it's a phone call. Um, and uh, geolocation is provided because you can imagine the situation for a deaf blind individual. If they make a call and geolocation is not provided, then uh, just the issue of, of, of locating the uh, call would be very complicated. And of course, there is the apps that we deliver and the picture shows a deafblind making a call via an interpreter. Uh, it's a call from home, so very comfortable situation, but a deafblind uh, can sign and then read on, the, on Braille. Just a little bit of uh, uh, RTT, once again, it's a standard by ITUT, IETF, Etsy. Uh, here the standards, uh, um, it's a zip call, so it's a standard zip call uh, that we add the text uh, according to the standard RFC 4103. So standardized text, uh, once again, enforced in uh, um, a, number of country, a number of European countries in the new telecom legislation in Europe from 2023 and uh, in North America as well, uh, US and Canada. Just as, as an example, uh, how we provided accessibility to 112 in the Netherlands. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, since it's accessibility, you saw the number of calls, of course, increasing, but even in the US, considering the large number of calls. So the main thing here is to integrate to the main platform, uh, integrating the queue uh, and calls distributed to the call taker and having API to the call taker. And geolocation, of course, is integrated in the same uh, system provided or available um, in moment two. Uh, very important, and, and in, in many countries in Europe, the apps are already distributed by national health insurance uh, schemes, uh, as it is in the Netherlands, but even in, in a number of other countries, um, US included as well. Um, and the call uh, can be connected via an interpreter if it's needed. Uh, once again, uh, very important uh, compliance with EU requirements and the European Electronic Communications Code uh, requires that uh, from 2023. So time uh, goes very fast, as we know. 
and this is a just a, a way that we have integrated to one one two uh, with uh, Q integration. So the MMX is, is, is separated from the main platform. And uh, once a call uh, is placed by a uh, deaf individual, then uh, we send a call to the main platform. And also uh, geolocation is sent in the same way, in the same call. Um, then it triggers the call from the call taker client, the standard one. And uh, which also triggers the uh, uh, MMX uh, desktop client, which then enables the call taker to use text and voice to the caller. A little bit more about what we deliver. Uh, so uh, we deliver accessible apps uh, to end users that include also geolocation. Uh, RTT workstation uh, for PSAPs, uh, integration to main platform, um, integration to external interpretation services, and that's done uh, very commonly and widely in uh, a number of European countries already. And uh, so again, once again, it's used in 13 countries. Usually uh, the call goes uh, first to the interpretation service and then the interpretation service calls uh, using a voice line to uh, legacy 112 and E911 in the US. Um, the whole purpose of, of, of what we're uh, talking about NG112 um, is that the, um, the call uh, can be made directly to the uh, PSAP so that if there's any issue, any emergency, the PSAP can always call back. And this is something that is a uh, key to uh, providing uh, equal um, access to emergency services. A little bit about NYSE. Uh, why uh, NYSE? So we have a global reach. We are uh, working in a number of countries and uh, in North America, in Europe, uh, Asia as well, and, and um, in Dubai. Um, Proven technology because it's actually been the technology being available since 2002. Um, so uh, let's say moving on with the new new standards being introduced in the past uh, uh, 15, 20 years. Um, always using open standards and um, once again trusted in um, 13 countries where we are available and running uh, specialized services and accessibility for uh, the community. It's a short presentation. Um, the day is almost over and, and, and there's been a lot of uh, good information. So I just wanted to give also my contact information. I don't know if you have questions today or if you want to send us questions another day. So this is my contact information. As you said, Tor, uh, short presentations are successful presentations. This is why we kept it to 10 minutes today, because it's a purpose to give, you know, to give a, a sneak peek of, of the company's products and services like you did. So thank you very much for bearing with us. And I now still have one minute with you, which I would like to devote to the audience to ask, to have their questions if they would like to ask them, of course. Um, in the meantime, I would still like to remind you that we have three presentations to come, still three to present. The next one is um, Bertrand Kasse from The Very Wear. So if the audience doesn't have any questions to you, Tor, I will then uh, move to another speaker. So thank you thank very you. much, Tor. Thank you and, and thanks now, everyone for listening. Thank you. We are now moving to the presentation of the Veryware. Bertrand, we see your screen very well. Yes, it's full screen. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ina, for this opportunity to, to present uh, today. So I'm Bertrand Kass, Business Unit Director at Devoware. So I'm gonna talk today about uh, our recent projects and services in line with uh, public safety domain. Okay, Devoer is a French group created in 2003 with an exceptional growth since the last 10 years. Part of it is due to the strong commitment uh, to innovation that uh, had a company with 10% of turnover invested in 
R&D. And of course, the acquisitions made in uh, recent years, which have boosted the group's offer and diversification. Here uh, in this slide, the show DWA headquarters in Paris and the international presence in several regions. We shared the first relay uh, of the group export strategy for products and services. Regarding group businesses, historically the, the group focus on the provision of real-time geolocation services used for national uh, security purposes in judicial or administrative investigations. Recently, we have added a, a digital forensic unit to analyze any type of digital content involved in criminal, financial, or legal cases. We also provide a multi-source analysis service using a big data tool to speed up investigations. And on the right side, we find the public safety and crisis management units, which are described in the following slides. First, with the crisis management unit, we offer training modules and role-playing games that allow all participants to deal with the reality of decision-making in crisis situations. In addition, the offer includes a complete range of tools to help in the management of critical situations and to coordinate simulations and exercise. In that slide, you can see our patented DNA lab usually being used on disaster situations for rapid victim identification. That's for the COVID-19. The lab has been adapted to, to carry carry out uh, the, the test in a massive way. And I display in the, the right uh, part of the slide on the picture, it's designed as a 10 foot container, autonomous in energy, easily transportable and convertible for other virus detection. The testing uh, protocol is World Health Organiza Organization approved. And about uh, testing performances, up to 500 PCR tests can be performed per day, and results are issued in less than four hours. It's an outstanding product for which we invite you to contact us for additional information about uh, its implementation in your country. Here on the left is shown a tool called Evan, made by Debrewer in partnership with uh, Amaranti. This tool ensures the safety of employees on the move when traveling abroad, where, uh, where in the land, uh, sometime with dangerous zone, people are able to receive detailed information according to the geography where they are, they are located. They, they allow for them to stay in close contact with the support assistance at all times. And on the right side is Gale, our middleware platform compliant with HCPMA technical specification, specially designed to enable emergency communication between public safety and swing points and, and apps. In the following slides, we recap on PMA benefits and we'll give further details on the next gen network architecture. So for PMA, I mean, that's something uh, very, uh, it's not new, I, I think, for uh, many of you. PIMEA has been created uh, to facilitate the roaming of emergency apps between uh, different regions of the same country or between different, uh, different countries. So, for instance, I'm living in Spain and I use a local emergency app that works perfectly in the, my residence in Madrid. We said be connecting to Pemia Network, the app won't work in any place uh, out of Madrid. At the opposite, in, if I'm traveling to Milan, I can use my Pemia app and I contact lo lo the local PIS app, the communication will work. That means that Pemia in the first instance enables the roaming of apps. But it's not all. 
the standard also brings new way of communication for people uh, with disabilities to contact the emergency or relay services through different way like uh, video or chat. PME, of course, is about apps, but not only restricted to mobile phones. It can be used from any device, laptop, tablet, browsers, giving a great flexibility of usage. Finally, to cover all the use cases that may arise, an extension of the standard is in progress to interoperate with NG12. In this diagram is depicted the network to support the next-gen architecture. So, summarizing, in addition to the benefits already mentioned regarding the roaming of apps, PMA Gale is needed when regional or national peace apps want to offer the citizen access to 112 or 911, not only via voice call, but also from internet applications that can be mobile apps or web browsers. The access is enabled in an easy way through video, instant messaging, file sharing, or any other capability offered by the applications. The control of communication as specified in the standards is done through privacy control and security mechanism, always in conformity with the regulation around security schemes and data protection. Here, we can uh, name GDPR law. So how is the service actually provided? Gale provides two simple APIs one for connecting the applications and other one for communication with the PSAP. The letter allows to receive information identifying the citizen, such as his or her exaltation, spoken or written languages, the type of disability, if any, and the person to contact, to contact in case of emergency. It can then establish emergency communication with available technologies. So for, for example, audio video using WebRTC, instant messaging, which can be chat, and also file exchange with image or pictograms. Once the service is operational, the platform components are connected to the PMA networks and from there communi communication between the application users and the foreign PSAP connected to the network is activated. In addition, Gale offers several optional gateways to interoperate with the SIP-based infrastructure, enabling WebRTC SIP interwork for audio, video, and multi-party conferencing. Much more things could be added there, uh, but I think that we have a limited time. So, I will uh, recap on and conclude saying that there is good news. PEMA lab deployments uh, are ongoing today to connect new applications and, and PSAP in Europe. And if we were to make a recommendation here, it would be to use the combination of available standards to improve the current issues on accessibility, roaming, and emergency access of online platforms. To help on this issue regarding PMEA, a consortium has been created. The website is shown here, and Devoe, as one of the members, is already working with, in partnership with different providers to improve emergency communications and, of course, invite you to, to join us. That's all for me. Thank you very much for your attention. Of course, we are happy to answer your questions with more details about the products we have been talking today. Uh, I can answer now if there is some time remaining, or you can send me any questions at the email display here or by phone. Thanks again Thank to you. all.
you're welcome sorry for interrupting the time is uh, again rushing very much um i don't see any questions bertrand but thank you very much we will move now uh, to another presenter so uh, domagoj pa poliak uh, from king ict is with us today as well yes to present you hello. yes 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 hello hello yes we hear you well do you see my presentation everything is visible i hear you well you are ready to go Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Domagoj Poljak. I'm a Territory Business Development Manager, and uh, I would like to present our company profile. Uh, what about us? Uh, King is a Croatian company. Uh, we are in ICT business, and we are the biggest in Croatia, and probably in, 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 uh, in, in the region. Company is 100% uh, ownership of uh, one owner, and we are present in all Balkans region. Uh, but I will say a little bit more about that later in, in, in presentation. Uh, King ICT is a part of a longer uh, group of companies that include various industries. And um, we are divided in, in uh, four segments, uh, system integration uh, and, and software development, um, e-commerce, uh, agriculture, real estate, we are really, we are really wide. Uh, we are original system integrator founded in, in 1998 as a part of the Amsung group. And uh, what are we trying to do is uh, unifying people, businesses, technology with the goal of contributing to the, to the digital society. Uh, our locations, we have uh, headquarters in, in, in Zagreb, our service centers in, in, in Osijek, Rijeka, Split and Zagreb, also in Croatia. And um, also our regional companies, which are based in, in, in uh, Beograd, Serbia, uh, Sarajevo, Bosnia Herzegovina, Skopje, North Macedonia, and Pristina, Pristina Kosovo. Uh, what we are trying to do with, with the regional companies is uh, to be present in, in, in regional market and also to copy paste the projects from Croatia and to deal, deliver experience and, and, and knowledge from, from the past projects that we've done. Uh, something about our business development of uh, organization. Uh, we started it in, in uh, 1998 as a, a personal IT company. Then uh, we uh, bought or, 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 or tried to, to develop our new firms or companies. And um, uh, the last one, or the last, the last one is uh, Planet Devet. Uh, of Planet Nine, which are, are, are developing and making drones, uh, but not small commercial ones, uh, but specialized drones, which are used for military, police, geo, agriculture, and, and other purposes. Also, we are uh, uh, strongly uh, developing our, our software uh, companies, and the latest one is, is RTC in uh, 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 Banja Luka, which is in, in Bosnia in, in, and Herzegovina. Uh, our business development portfolio. As I said, uh, we started in 1998 as a personal IT company, then like a software development, uh, we, we, we get in the data centers, IT infrastructure, uh, uh, um, uh, physical security systems, uh, game information systems, and, 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 and other that you can see uh, in uh, emergency softwares, uh, as you can see on, 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 on this, this slide. Uh, we are cont constantly, uh, constantly growing in, in, in employees and in, in revenue uh, all these years. Uh, uh, also, also uh, as a market share, uh, uh, this is uh, the, the last four years of our revenue, and then 2019 we was on 140 million euros. So, so for this region, it's 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 a, it's a, it's a really it's a really good good. Uh, revenue. Uh, we've passed uh, a magic number of 500 people in, in, in our company. So uh, this is the, the, the slide that you can see how we grow with, with, with that. Uh, indicators of excellence. We are ISO certified with, with all ISO certification. We are NATO security certified. We, we've done a, a few projects with NATO. Uh, some, some are, are still uh, running. Um, we are also uh, 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 project management certified uh, with the PMI uh, methodology, ETIL, IPMA, and, 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 and others. So 
uh, our products and, and uh, advanced solutions, we have many uh, in our portfolio, but uh, for this purpose, or this uh, presentation is, uh, is uh, a solution for emergency response management that we, that we uh, developed. We also have uh, many, many more like uh, geo-information system, like document management solutions, like uh, learning management systems. Uh, uh, we, we are really, really, really wide, as 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 you can see. Uh, something about our solution, about about uh, our uh, projects that we've done. Some projects, not all. Uh, we've done a uh, software for public transportation payment in, in Zagreb, uh, 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 system for enrollment in high education institutions of Ministry of Education of Croatia, ticket booking software for Croatian rail, rail belts, um, video su supervision system at critical traffic hubs and connection in, in the city of, of Zagreb, uh, Zagreb International Airport uh, with uh, video, su video surveillance, access control, IT infrastructure, IT network, uh, implementation of national Schengen information system, uh, 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 which which uh, we have to do because uh, we we are in the European Union and, and in, in Schengen. Uh, automated system and, and, and reception security screening and uh, delivery of baggage for airport Dubrovnik, e schools and and and, and many many more. Our solutions are divided in in, in uh, how to say in industries in part of industries like transport, like energetics, like agriculture, like defense and safety, state administration, all you can see in, in, in this slide on, 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 on this presentation. Uh, today is, is uh, we are talking about, about defense and safety and we are talking about the sphere. Uh, this is our product uh, 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 that's, that we've done. And uh, this is the NG112 for, for, for pilot project in Croatia. Uh, we've done it. Uh, 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 the project goal was uh, develop solution to engage emergency services over internet. Uh, emergency services uh, uh, must be able to 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 provide to process voice uh, and 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 uh, and others and uh, video and text calls made through an internet protocol environment. This possibility <clears throat> possibility to establish other communications that involve video and text, emergency services to remain fully reachable. Uh, emergency voice call with location over IP, emergency video and voice call with location over IP, and the text emergency call with location over IP. Um, for example, in this slide, you can see uh, 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 um, you can see the screen, uh, screens of application which are developed and delivered uh, to, 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 our, to our customer. And uh, what we are trying to do is emerging technologies for, for digital society. We are, we are really uh, open for, for new technologies. And uh, for this, we, we think that, that uh, this is the future of, of, of uh, IT technology and, uh, and uh, we are developing uh, some other projects with, with, with that. Uh, like uh, machine learning, like big data analytics, like uh, uh, cloud and mobility, and we really, really think that that this is going to be a, a future of 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 IT industry. Our customers uh, divided uh, per industries. Uh, really, we have a lot of uh, uh, our customers in Croatia and also in the region, also in in European Union, and uh, from this slide, they they are not all on. All on, on this. Our partners, we are we are uh, doing our businesses with 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 the uh, most uh, world uh, brands. Uh, with uh, you can see here, uh, it's it's a really 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 wide uh, specter. So so we are really good known about the technology, about about uh, everything that that you can see from from this slide because uh, there are really many of of them. And uh, this is it. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or, or, or any any other, uh, uh, you can send uh, me a mail or, or, or something else, or you can call me or, or anything.
Thank you, Domagoy. It was exactly the purpose of this event. So people, after seeing your presentation, if they have questions, well, they could uh, they could ask it here. But if not, I don't see any. They will definitely con uh, contact you afterwards. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, to stay thank with you. us. We have. Thank you very much, Domagoy. We still have one presentation uh, to um, to continue with, and this is uh, bandwidth. Christian Milito uh, is going to present. Um, the company's leading uh, the company's products and services. Um, I see your screen, Christian. Good afternoon. So this is uh, Christian Milito with Bandwidth, and um, I'm part of the uh, global expansion, basically for our company. So I'm uh, the last one, so I'll try to make it short. Uh, a little bit of a timeline for the company history. The company has been around for about 21 years. It's based in the United States in Raleigh. North Carolina, we have offices in Denver, Colorado, and also like in New York, you know, Rochester and some other places. Um, the company is basically voice over IP, uh, you know, service provider, if you will, started, you know, to do that. And, um, you know, for the years, built basically a network, a national network, North America, US and Canada. Um, and uh, we also, you know, were like the first one working with uh, Google and the Google Voice to provide the, uh, voice over IP network, you know, infrastructure, you know, for their service. Um, we're like a communication, you know, like a, a platform as a service, you know, we have a set of APIs so people can use our network for, you know, voice-based, you know, services, messaging-based services such as SMS, SMS delivery. We have conferencing capabilities, you know, collaboration and, and so forth. So we were like, you know, one of the first one providing these, you know, services. Um, back in 2017, we went public in on the NASDAQ about three years ago. The company has close to 900 people now. We are, you know, turnover is close to about $300 million, basically, for bandwidth. And uh, two years ago, we started to offering, like, you know, international long distance. And then uh, last year, basically, we were looking at, you know, also, like, offering, like, emergency services. And, you know, we're working with some of the income, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I didn't put it on the slide for 2020, but about two weeks ago, we made like a, an announcement, a press release that uh, Bandwidth has acquired basically Voxpon, which is based like in uh, Brussels and uh, in London, and the acquisition is going to close uh, at the end of this week, as a matter of fact, on the 31st. Um, so basically what we do is we modernize you know, communication using IP-based technology. Mentioned we're like a communication in you know, a platform as a service, and uh, some of the large you know, customers we have, for example, mentioned you know, Google, we work with Microsoft. We have their you know, Microsoft you know, team products. So we have a product we have deployed like in the US and Canada with Microsoft to provide you know, like collaboration and they use our network for that. Uh, other customer, large customer, you might be aware of, of people like Cisco. Cisco is a WebEx application, you know, equivalent to what we are like, you know, using today, for example. So we provide infrastructure, you know, API basically for you know, service delivery. So overall, we have about 365, you know, customers uh, in North America and looking to expand, you know, around the globe, you know, as well. All right, so in the context of emergency services, we uh, we offer in the United States what we call like dynamic location uh, routing. Uh, there's a typo, I'm sorry, it's routing as opposed to routing. <laughs> Uh, DLR and basically what it is is you know for voice over IP the past 15 20 years voice over IP was a replacement of you know fixed line if you will telephone numbers and, and, and addresses right and uh, it was basically a fixed you know, uh, service you know replacement and then some service provider like let's say Vonage in the United States started to provide like nomadic you know VoIP you know services where you could take you know your telephone you know adapter and move basically from your home to your office or to you know, your secondary house or, you know, someplace else, like at the Starbucks coffee, for example, and make, you know, like VoIP, you know, calls using, you know, a desktop and then ultimately, you know, laptop computer. So it became like, you know, more uh, dynamic and nomadic. And then, you know, nowadays people are using like smartphones. So VoIP is going from fixed to nomadic to mobile using smartphone, basically, uh, tablet, PC, laptop, and so forth. So what we've done basically, is decoupling, if you will, the location, the fixed location, civics location, with the uh, end user, you know, telephone numbers. And we have created, for example, a set of locations where you could be located or like indoors, uh, inside the building, um, a campus, uh, and something like that, with, you know, uh, end user. End user is not a, specifically a telephone numbers, 
you can have different type of end user you know identifier if you want uh, that would be mapped you know to different you know like locations and we store all of those within you know uh, our you know database and uh, at the time of call dynamically we can associate a specific uh, locations to a specific you know end user and the end user you know could be for example a smartphone it could be a tablet pc it could be a desktop computer a laptop computer right uh, located at different places within a um, uh, within the building so it's dynamically allocated at time of call so in order to do that we have implemented different standards so uh, on the uh, original side basically we conform with engine one one and one one two as well basically uh, which is the uh, nina you know i3 standards and the equivalent you know like in europe if you will and support you know pd for delivery of locations and uh, within the cpd for example use geo geolocation headers to include specific you know geolocation identifiers and uh, within the form header instead of just supporting the telephone numbers we can do telephone numbers but we can do different type of identifiers an example of that for the microsoft you know, team, you know, team type of products we can use an email address and the user you know will be uh, used as the identifier if you want but you could use like anything you want like an ip address a mac address and anything you want to think about you know as part of the identifier so that's kind of you know the paradigm you know that uh, we are using you know nowadays basically for voice over ip and uh, um, we have deployed you know solutions for example in the united states in the us you know a company manage about 20, 000, uh, 20 million i'm sorry 20 million basically uh, uh, endpoint you know voice over ip uh, for the service that we provide and a lot of those services are you know like using the dlr you know solutions um, now as part of the global extension we um, we are working in the UK and uh, we have a partnership with uh, British Telecom to, de you know, to deploy and develop in you know, a similar type of services. So it could be in a pre-provisioned location information, such as in a civic address, if you will, of, you know, inside the building, or it could be like, you know, an XY geodetic or geographic uh, location that uh, coming for like a mobile phone, if you will, uh, it, can, it could be coming from a mobile phone, it can be coming from an equal type of call, and then this, you know, like location, either like geographic or pre-provision, you know, civic, you know, can be used at the time of call, you know, basically and be communicated between the, the provider network and, you know, our, you know, routing solutions, basically. And we provide, you know, call routing, if you will, uh, using uh, geographic, you know, boundaries. Everything we use is basically GIS, you know, based, based on S3 presentation that you listened, you know, prior to that and have the capability to deliver, you know, that basically location information to, uh, you know, to PSAP information. Uh, so in the case of the UK, we use, you know, like wireless technology, if you will, for VoIP, because we think that VoIP is mobile. And the, the type of applications are like around telematics, if you want, like e-call. They are like, you know, Google Assistant, so Amazon, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, type of, you know, like, uh, you know, calls where it's coming from a device, if you will, and not necessarily by a phone, right? So this all type of use case that we have identified that we can support with in our solution and we can also have a callback from the uh, PSAP back to the end user or to the mobile device or to you know the device that's being used to make basically a, a 999 or 112 calls in the UK. Uh, so what we are right now is that uh, we are trying to uh, you know kind of uh, you know finish you know like the implementation uh, and the testing so the solution you know we are looking at doing like proof of concept basically this quarter and going live, you know, sometimes in Q1, you know, like next year, once we'll have, you know, like inbound and outbound, you know, services, you know, fully implemented. And we will implement, you know, also like uh, emergency services, right, for like 999 across the UK and 112, you know, as well. And then we are also working, you know, with BT in, uh, with the Republic of Ireland uh, to do the same thing. There's minor, you know, specification changes, but the solution is pretty much the same. and. You know, will be also deployed sometimes in uh, 2021. And um, after that, you know, we intend to deploy, you know, the same type of solution using building, you know, partnership and also with our in acquisition of folks on, you know, for services in France, Belgium, Germany, Spain, Italy, and so forth. Uh, this is a very busy, you know, diagram, but I wanted to give you an example of the solution we are deploying in the United Kingdom, which is based on what we are deploying in the United States, but has been adapted basically for the European market. On the left you know, side, basically what you see is a VoIP in a customer. 
So there will be somebody who has an enterprise, for example, network, or can be an alternate, you know, carriers, if you will, but a VoIP you know, network, running applications such as, you know, Microsoft Team um, or Google, you know, in Gal, for example. And then they will send a SIP invite, uh, SIP invite, which include basically the location information. Uh, the SIP invite will include the location information um, with the call, and then will be routed basically to our network. <clears throat> Uh, once it's routed to our network, we, we use basically the location identifier to identify which location, right, was basically sent uh, to us. And uh, basically, we use, you know, geographic, you know, boundaries from our location information services, you know, database. And as I said, you could have multiple locations associated with the user. An example of that, you might have somebody, one telephone number is used across like an hospital, and then they would be using a small phone, they might be using a tablet PC, they might be using a laptop, a desktop, right? When they move around, and you can have these different location pre-provision based on the device making the call. You will have a specific location, which might be in the lobby versus in a specific exam room, where it can be in you know, someplace else within the hospital or the campus. And you know, the SIP call is basically you know sent out uh, to the uh, uh, you know British Telecom you know, like network, if you will, using IP technology, and then will be converted into ISDN, if you will. And then, so that's for the SIP, for the voice component, the location is extracted and we are using the AML, you know, like standards. Uh, in the case of AML, we use HTTP POST, right? For the standards, if you will, for the data component to send locations. And it goes to a web services, you know, like uh, server, which is basically the uh, AML servers, you know, nationwide, you know, like for like British Telecom, that they use, you know, for like wireless location repository. And, um, you know, so once the call goes to level one PSAP, it, it's also routed, you know, like uh, they use the location basically, right, to route to the second level in the PSAP of what is Iranian EMS. And they can use basically a telephone numbers or callback to uh, query the location information to dispatch um, the user, to the emergency users. Oops, I think I got something wrong here. It's not moving on. Yeah, sorry. Um, just before we uh, close, basically location information, right? They can come from the GPS if it's coming from a small phone. You probably heard about DBH, device-based hybrid location from Google, ELS, or being used by uh, Apple, like in the context of ML, so we can use that. We can use other type of cellular information like cell ID. We can use geocoding, like all we do, for example, when we do like, you know, pre-provisioning and registration of CDP address, we geocode all, and then we use you know, the geocoded, you know, information to route the call, you know, as well. And so there are multiple, you know, source in terms of confidence, if you will, and uncertainty used for location information. But I think uh, a lot of the emergency calls, for example, in the United States, you know, a lot of the calls are coming from indoors and from mobile device, and they are using voice over IP in you know, a client or application. So we develop in our solution to meet basically those needs. Uh, the, the solution is basically standard based, as I mentioned, right? So uses, you know, SIP, PD flow, uh, you know, to carry the location using NG111 and NG112 standards, and also for location delivery uses like AML, you know, standards, you know, as well. That's about it. Thank you, and you have my contact. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me for follow up. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much for your presentation, for uh, being for closing the uh, lineup of all the presentations of today. Um, with um, a small note, uh, I would like to thank all the participants that have stayed until the end and who also connected. Uh, today to our virtual event. I thank you all the speakers and the companies that uh, presented today. The recording of today's uh, virtual event will be available on in our web page, event web page, as well as on YouTube um, tomorrow morning, early afternoon. Um, with the same registration link, come and join us tomorrow. You see on this slide that it's not the end, it's just the beginning. So tomorrow uh, we have another set of presentations, interesting presentations for you. So please join us with the same link that you connected today. Of course, if you have any questions uh, whatsoever, recommendations, please feel 
to contact me and Taviana. We are here to listen to you. We know many of you encountered some issues with uh, cameras or uh, visibility or audio. I'm talking about the participants, but also the speakers. Uh, we take it very seriously. So thank you very much for letting us know what has been worked. We are there to reply to your emails even this evening to make sure that tomorrow you will see everything from the beginning. So with this, uh, I would like to ask now, um, also uh, to tell you goodbye and uh, we will now turn off uh, turn on the cameras the moderators and the speakers because we feel that uh, with the physical events not being there the virtual events are not giving all of the aspects of the actual meetings so please i i would like to ask the our speakers of today to activate their webcams to really send the message to everyone that uh, yes we will uh, again meet hopefully in person soon and with this i i give the floor to taviana and thank you very much from my side yes thank asia thanks uh, their audience thanks uh, the presenters for the very interesting presentations of today. Uh, yes, as Kasia said, it's very important that uh, we stay connected. Uh, the times are very uh, challenging for everyone, uh, for us uh, on a personal level, but also um, on the professional side. So it's also very important that we support uh, the public uh, safety uh, organizations uh, and try to see what are their, um, yes, their needs and uh, to propose uh, the best solutions for them. So uh, their participants, if you have any questions, if you want to know more about their products and services, uh, feel free to, to contact uh, the presenting companies uh, of today and of the next days. Uh, because it's very important that uh, we continue improving the emergency response despite uh, the situation and uh, we really uh, wish you all the best, uh, stay safe and uh, we keep in touch. Bye-bye everyone, bye -bye. thank you very much for joining, bye-bye.